Hi again, everybody. Greg Blanchard and Mark McKelvey welcoming you back to another edition of COSA TV. Looking ahead to the O'Brien Awards. They're coming up this Sunday evening. Once again, going to be done in a virtual format. And Mark, tonight we'll be joined by one of the finalists for the Rising Star category this year, a young gentleman who uh, really has taken the nation by storm in the driving ranks. Yeah, he certainly has. He's been making an impact all throughout Ontario, racing at multiple tracks and one of the busier rainsmen of the past year. That is Austin Story. So it's going to be great to catch up with Austin, one of two finalists, along with Rachel Andrew for that Rising Star Award, as you mentioned, Greg. It's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, don't forget that this Sunday night, it will be the 2020 O'Brien Awards presentation. The awards themselves are getting underway at 7.30, but make sure to tune in at 5.30 for this year's Red Carpet Show. Kelly Spencer will once again be hosting the Red Carpet Gala from 5.30 until 6.30, and the O'Brien Awards for 2020 will be handed out beginning at 7.30. You can watch via Standard Bread Canada's website. They'll also be live streaming on their Facebook page. We will take a commercial break, and when we come back, we'll meet Austin Sori, one of the finalists this year for the O'Brien Award as Rising Star. COSA, the Central Ontario Standard Bread Association, proudly serving Ontario horse people with integrity and accountability. Collaborative, supportive, helping to ensure a vibrant harness racing industry, lifetime membership is free and there are many benefits. Become a new member today. COSA, representing the interests of horse people racing at Ontario racetracks. To find out more, visit COSAonline.com. Enjoy the thrill of the race anywhere, anytime with HPIBet.com. Join for free and use your smartphone, tablet, or PC to watch and wager when you can't be at the track. Stream live racing from over 450 tracks. Bet with ease from anywhere. It's safe and secure. Get rewards, race alerts, tips, and more. For a limited time, get $100 when you become a member. Plus, one month free live race streaming and your first bet is on us. Go to HPIBet.com to join for free today. All right, and welcome back to uh, COSA TV as we get ready for the O'Brien Awards this Sunday evening. And uh, one of the fun categories is Rising Star, where we look at uh, some of the, the future of the sport, if you will. And uh, we've got one of the finalists joining us uh, tonight. His name is Austin Sorry, uh, Austin, coming off uh, your best year ever in 2020, uh, about your third full season of driving, correct? And uh I mean, when you consider COVID and the downtime and whatnot, uh, how happy were you with the year you had? I'm uh, real happy with the year. I had having three months off and just try to hit that 160 goal I set, and I was only nine away. You set the goals. Uh, some people talk about maybe setting goals or not setting goals. Is that something you've always uh, uh, kind of – implemented into your life as having targets and having goals that you're trying to reach each and every year? Yeah, it gives you something to work forward to when, when you're having like a, a down day, you're like, all right, I'll get back and back going because I got to get to 160. Like, mm -hmm. Just helps you through the tough times. Now, Austin, you're, uh, you're a PEI native uh, like myself and uh, you grew up in, in uh, Montague. Uh, you know, for those who, who wouldn't know, tell us about the town, first of all, and that part of the island down on the east end and, and kind of growing up there and how you got involved in, in horse racing. Uh, it's a little town. You see more more potato fields than you would uh, buildings. <laughs> uh, it's quiet. You never see any traffic. You, like, you see more tractors than you would cars. Sure. And... <laughs> what there's horses there's horses everywhere is down there yeah horse country for sure and did your your family uh was involved correct and and were you in it uh, kind of right from day one yeah my father had horses and right from day one i'd be skipping school to go to the barn be fake and sick just to go to the barn <laughs> <laughs> That's, a, that's what you got to do. I mean, you obviously took a, a real love to it. Tell us a little bit about your transition and uh, coming to Ontario. Uh, the transition was tough at the start. It uh, took a lot to get used to. From, like, down home, you only race one night a week in the winter time, then we shut down for two months. 
and up here you go seven days a week straight like on stop and when you made your game plan to come up here uh you know what what did you have to have lined up uh to make the move i assume you you had contacts and maybe had a job lined up before you came and, and that type of thing yeah, I had a job lined up uh, working for Patrick Shepard when he first come. And uh, I moved in with Jay Harris, where I'm still living now. And uh, he told me if I come work for Patrick that he'd give me a shot driving some horses each week. And as long as I worked, I got to drive. So That's a good good way to do it and uh, make the most of your, your situation. And uh, driving, was that always in the, in the cards for you? Was that something growing up that you, you just wanted to be a catch driver? Yeah, I always used to beat the bed posts off the bed all the time with the whips. Every time I come home, I go to the track just to collect whips. That's all I went for. <clears throat> and you, uh, you got some of your early lessons, uh, I know on the matinee circuit, uh, right? Uh, and, uh, it, tell me if this is, is right. Uh, I think you set a track record at the time at Panette. I remember Panette Raceway, and I don't remember them going this kind of speed. Uh, 157 and 2, I think, was, uh, was the mile. Uh, tell us about that back in 2000 and, uh, and uh, I think, 14, at the age of 14. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> did a matinee down there, and we had the mayor, one hot vet, and she hasn't been no good for like two weeks. So dad goes, oh, well, you can drive her in the matinees and see if, like, just let her roll. I was like, well, okay. I said, she can go 57 over Charlottetown, hopefully go 58. I want to go fast. So put her behind the gate, and I just went as fast and as far as we could go. Come back, they're like, you know how fast you went? And I'm like, no. I was like, probably two minutes. I'm like, she's been no good. She, like, paced two minutes the week before. It was, yeah, 57. I was like, no way. And they got the time wrong, and like, a bunch of people after that were like, no, we had it in the phones and everything. It was cool. <laughs> yeah, like I said, I, I mean, I remember going there as a kid, so uh, they've probably improved that track a little bit since that time. Probably made it a little bit wider, maybe the turns a little bit uh, better, hopefully, uh, when, you're, when you're going that kind of speed. Uh, but, uh, I mean, what was that experience like for you? I mean, that, that set the groundwork, I'm sure, for you. And uh, and I'm sure you learned a lot from those days that, uh, you know, have carried you forward to, to today when you're driving at tracks like Mohawk. Yeah, it, uh, it teaches you a lot quick in the matinees, get people hooking up all the time. You always have you paying attention because you were nervous, too. It's just it's a big step to being a catch driver if you want to start you've got now over 2,000 starts under your just from the start till now where have you noticed uh improvements or maturity uh you know have you changed your driving style from the start and um what do you continue to work on uh i see a big difference because when i first got my license i had everything on the front there's the only spot i thought i could win was on the front now it doesn't matter where i get away i can you can plan the race out as it mm -hmm. unfolds it's uh don't matter you can be first up and be second over on the front doesn't matter where you sit you, as long as you have the horse in the right spot it, you have a shot to win and so growing up i'm sure you watched uh, racing in ontario and some of the other jurisdictions outside of uh, the maritimes uh, but who Going back to the early days, who were your, your idols or guys you looked up to driving both back in the Maritimes and then uh, in places like Ontario? Uh, in the Maritimes, be Mark Campbell. It, it's, you can make one go, like, on real. You can be 100 to 1, he jumps up on it and just takes off. And then up here, we uh, used to follow Scott Zeron a lot up here and did you do you think you took or tried to model yourself at all after guys like that or uh you know if you were going to describe your driving style uh to somebody what what would you say it is and what what kind of driver do you hope uh, to be uh i'd say it's a little bit of everything like i like being first up not gonna lie but if it doesn't work, you get second over works just as good too for me. Like, mm -hmm. 
not in a big panic if I'm not first up or on the front. Now, Austin, uh, since you've come to Ontario, I mean, like I said, you're continuing to, you know, get better each and every day. Is there one moment uh, since your time here in Ontario that really sticks out as a career highlight to this point? Yeah, the night in London there, this winter when I went five. It was, uh, I should have went six, being a little greedy, but uh, we're leaving the gate and I pushed him a little too much and he run. And then I was practicing the whole mile and still finished third. It's interesting. You talk about um, liking or, or wanting to be first up a lot in a race. That That's surprising to me. Uh, you know, we've traditionally thought that that's, uh, that's the tough trip for a horse. But nowadays, uh, not so much, would you say, that, you know, with the uh, horses, their durability, their speed, the way they can carry it now, um, sometimes you just don't want to be, be behind other horses. You've got maybe more work to do that way. Is that a, a fair assessment? Yeah, sometimes you get third over, and in the last turn, you could be four wide to get around them. The best buy would be like second over, I think, or the two hole passing lane. Or maybe right on the, the front end on a half mile track. Yeah, that's the best spot <laughs> to be in a half. If you can get there, without getting sure. tortured too much. <laughs> Now, looking at, uh, you know, your driving record and, and the opportunities that you've had, uh, some chances to go race at Woodbine Mohawk Park. Uh, what's that transition like uh, as someone who's been basically on a half mile track uh, since day one? Uh, how do you like driving on the big oval? It's different. Uh, it's just you have to have patience a lot there because you have so much time and you can go 52 and it feels like you're just like on a light jog there. It's totally different <laughs> now you, you come across as a kind of a laid-back guy uh, kind of low-key um, but in the last couple of years especially uh, since you've come here uh, you've gotten a, a, a fair bit of attention and uh, you know you're, you're being interviewed more and uh, you know been tabbed as one of the young guys that uh, that people think really has a bright future and, and here you are again uh, nominated in this category uh, how's that been for you? What's that like to to try and get used to that uh, sort of attention at such a young age? Uh, it's hard to get used to. I don't like interviews too much. It's uh, <laughs> it's different. You find the kind of staying humble and and grounded like that is that um, you know something to do with your maybe the PEI roots and and coming from from that part of the country? Yeah, I think so. PEI, you're pretty humble down there just the way it is in PEI. So obviously we're talking about the O'Brien Awards. It's coming up on Sunday night. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, how you found out that you were a finalist uh, for the Future Star Award and, and how much that meant to you to, to be a finalist. I got a phone call and uh, I think it was like 10.30 or something like that. And uh, I was just waking up there, sleep, <laughs> slept in a bit. So I was like, half asleep when I answer the phone and she goes you've been a finalist I'm like oh okay like never thought much of it and yeah. I get up and went and had a shower I was like well, I'm the finalist for the O'Brien Awards again I was like that's cool <laughs> like I'm sure that's quite an honor finalist. right yeah quite an honor right uh, the best of the best in Canada and uh, we should mention uh, your fellow finalist is uh, Rachel Andrew with uh, Island uh, Connections as well and uh she had an incredible year uh this past season and uh recently went over the million dollar mark in uh career earnings so you're in tough austin uh and i'm sure you get to see a bit of uh how she runs her operation what can you what can you say about what you've seen from uh rachel uh she works hard she puts uh, lots of time into her horses and she cares for them a lot And you, you have a good sense of that too. Uh, you know, you've uh, you've trained and driven, but uh, it appears now that you're you're more focused on the driving. Um, you know, is your your aim to be one of the the top drivers in the sport someday? I hope to be. Everybody that catch drives hopes to be the top, but just uh, it's a long road to get there, and just hopefully we get there one day. And obviously, to get to the top, you know, you have to, you know 
have a little help along the way. Who are some people here locally? You know, you mentioned about uh, coming up to work for, for Pat Shepard, but who are some of the people uh, here in Ontario that have been a, a big influence and a big help in your career so far? Uh, there's been tons of people that helped me out through my career. Um, I know uh, Peter Brickman, Irish Thunder, the preferred three trotter, nice horse to drive and do anything with them. He helped out a lot to get in that drive. And uh, just so everybody that gives me a shot, put me down. Helps out my career every time. And it seems like more and uh, more people are, uh, you know, putting that confidence in you and, and listing you. And uh, obviously it shows up in the numbers uh, that you were able to put up this past year. Um, again, we, we know you come from PEI and uh, let's talk uh, big races that you, you'd love to win. And uh, I think I've read that you're like, most who uh, have grown up there and uh, and even if you go on to uh, different or greener pastures if you want to call it that in the race game there's one race that uh, you've gotten the radar you want to go back and win someday isn't there yep yeah the gold cup and saucer that's the one i want to win and i mean what is it about that race for people that have maybe heard about it but just haven't experienced it what what is it that separates it from all the other big races uh just the way the show goes that the grandstands are packed like you can't even walk through and the and the lights go out and you put the spotlight on the horses and you watch them it's it's something i don't think you'll ever see before if you let you go mark you uh, you haven't uh, made an appearance yeah, have you? <laughs> no, but I haven't. I it's, yeah, it's up there. It's on the list for sure. I think uh, if there's one thing, and, and we've talked about this off camera before, but with COVID, it's really put a lot of things into perspective. But it's also uh, it's made a lot of those things that you always say you're going to do uh, a priority when we can get back to it. I'd love to get there and, and check it out. And may, maybe by the time I do get there, Austin's going to be uh, lifting uh, lifting the trophy at the end of the night. You never know. <laughs> oh, we hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I'll ask you this, Austin. If uh, if you weren't driving horses, uh, is there anything else you could have even imagined doing as far as a career? No, not really. It's pretty well what I always wanted to do. And if not drive, I'd sooner train, train horses. Mm -hmm. but. Uh, well, let's talk about a, a favorite horse or a, or a highlight moment uh, that you have had to this point in your career. Uh, I mean, one that comes to mind for me that I assume is near the top of your list is uh, with a horse called Bugsy McGuire uh, winning at uh, Mohawk Park. Yeah. You know, that was, uh, I'm not sure how to explain that one because the first time over there, first time getting a drive there, and I was hoping just to get a check, like top three would be wicked, and then he was out and you win. And you, you were saying that... Uh, you know, we know that Mohawk is one of the longest stretches in North America, and it probably seemed really long that night or extra long. Oh, it seemed real long that, that night. He's coming off the top of the turn. I flipped him out, and I let him go, and I was, like, halfway down, like, all right, where's the finish line at? And I'm, like, starting to look. I'm, like, getting worried. I was, like, all right, I watched a lot of races here. I said, they always get picked off right at the wire. And I was, like, I don't know if I'm far enough away or not. Well, you got it done that night, and, uh, yeah, one of uh, – 151 victories this past year. So uh, well done on that. Uh, and uh, listen, uh, it looks like uh, things are going uh, as good as they could be for you right now on the driving side. And uh, I'm sure you're very, very anxious to get back at it like we all are. So uh, thank you for taking some time out to, to join us here tonight. And uh, we look forward to seeing you back at the bike soon. And uh, good luck to you this weekend. Thank you. That's Austin Sori, a finalist along with Rachel Andrew for the Rising Star Award at this year's O'Brien Awards. And don't forget, you can watch it all on the Standard Bread Canada website, live streaming there and through their Facebook page this Sunday evening. Uh, join Kelly Spencer for the Red Carpet Show beginning at 5.30 and the O'Brien Award hardware will be handed out uh, a little bit later in the evening at 7.30. We are looking forward to that. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube page for all the latest comment uh, content uh, here on COSA TV as well. Thank you again for joining us, and we'll see you next time on COSA TV. 
COSAF, the Central Ontario Standard Bread Association, proudly serving Ontario horse people with integrity and accountability. Collaborative, supportive, helping to ensure a vibrant harness racing industry, lifetime membership is free and there are many benefits. Become a new member today. COSA, representing the interests of horse people racing at Ontario racetracks. To find out more, visit cosaonline.com.